Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David Pugh, and I'm a staff scientist at the Cal Visualization Core Laboratory. Today, I'm going to continue my series of uh, getting started with PyTorch on IBEX training videos. In the previous video, I showed you how to use JupyterLab NVIDIA dashboards um, JupyterLab extension to monitor the GPU and CPU compute and memory utilization uh, interactively from within a JupyterLab server environment. In this training video, I'm going to show you how to get access to the same uh, CPU and GPU resource utilization dashboards, but running inside a standalone web server that you can launch as part of a batch training job that you would run on IBEX. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have my JupyterLab server up and running on IBEX on the debug partition. You know, please check out the previous video in the series that discusses exactly how to do that if you uh, need additional assistance with that. And in the source directory, if you recall, we were working with this train.py script. Let's go ahead and open this train.py script. So just going to make a couple of changes. So I'm going to bump up the number of training epochs for this job from just two training epochs to, say, five. And then I'm going to disable the tucked in progress bar. Since we're going to be launching this as a batch job, um, there's no need to, um, to, um, to put the progress bar. So I'll just save those changes there. OK. So now, um, now I'm going to show you how you can incorporate the, the JupyterLab uh, dashboards that we used in the previous video as part of a batch job on IMAX. So if we take a look at the, uh, at the bin directory, in the bin directory, there, is a, um, there are three scripts that we used to, um, to launch, actually, sorry, two scripts that we used last uh, two videos ago to launch our training job on IMAX. The first is the train.sbatch script. And the second is the launch train script. And today we're going to introduce a third. So if we go back to our train.sbat script, so in this script, um, we provide default values for the resources that we wish to use um, or we wish to request for our training job. We activate the conda environment. And then previously, all we did was just launch the training script. And now we're going to do one other thing. Before we launch the training script, we are going to use srun to reserve a port and then launch a um, dash NVIDIA dashboard server script, which is going to launch the metric server um, as a background process as part of our training job. And then this metric server will monitor our GPU and CPU utilization for our training job until our training job completes, at which point we will kill the NVIDIA dashboard server. So the way this works, um, and I'll show you the content, or I'll show you the contents of this launch NVIDIA dashboard server.srun script, which will explain how this works. So similar to the JupyterLab server, uh, whenever we launch a, um, a web server type um, tool on IBEX, we need to create a secure connection between the compute node on which that tool is running and our local laptop or workstation or wherever we're going to be monitoring the uh, the web server traffic from. And so the way that we'll do that is by getting uh, Slurm to allocate a particular port for the NV dashboard server. And we'll pick up the, uh, the IBEX node on which our job is running. And then I will echo out this SSH command. So this SSH command is going to create the uh, SSH tunnel from the compute node on which the uh, NV dashboard server is running and where our training job will be running and our local laptop or workstation running on a particular port. Once we know the port, and once we've set up the tunnel, then all we need to do is point our local browser to localhost, which is IP address 127.0.0.1, and the port on which the traffic from the compute node on IBEX is being forwarded. And the, finally, this command is what actually launches the JupyterLab NV dashboard server, which is going to be the standalone monitoring server. OK. So let's go ahead and launch this job. So if we go uh, back to our project home directory, and then we go to our launcher, 
and we can open a terminal window. Okay, and even though we're in this interactive session, we can still actually launch uh, launch batch jobs uh, on IBEX. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to launch a batch job the same way as we did before by just running our launch uh, train wrapper shell script. And if you remember from last time, the launch train wrapper shell script just does a bit of project bookkeeping, sets up some our, our project directory, creates a, a directory for our job based on its name, and then launches the uh, training job proper. Okay, so if we go back here, we can use the SQ command to check whether our job is running. And we can see it is. So this first job here is my Jupyter server that I've been working on for about 30 minutes. The second job here is the training job that I just launched. Both of them are being launched on the debug partition because again, I'm kind of prototyping, testing out a workflow. Okay. So let's take a look at the um, the slurm error script for this uh, for this job. So if I um, list the contents of the results directory, you'll see there is an example training job. So that is the folder that was created for this example training job uh, results. And inside there, we have several slurm error out scripts. So I've I've run this job a few times, so I have many. I have several slurm.error, slurm.out scripts. If you're doing this for the first time, you probably have two, one slurm.error, one slurm.out for uh, whatever job ID you have here. So one for, so what I wanna do is uh, one, four, seven, whoop, one, four, seven, seven, nine, three, slurm.error. And I want to just cap out this file, okay. So here, we can just copy this and go back to the terminal on our local uh, laptop or workstation, open a new terminal, paste that command, hit enter, and boom. So now we've created the tunnel from the compute node uh, on IBEX to forward traffic between the port on that compute node at which our MV dashboard server is running to the same port on our local laptop or workstation. So we can just minimize that, we no longer need it. Okay, now we can copy and paste this URL and paste it into our browser. And after a few seconds, hopefully this will, uh, this will load. Occasionally, I have had some uh, some issues with this uh, application promptly loading. Sometimes it can that can be browser uh, browser related issues. So maybe if your web browser is not updated, sometimes it helps to update and get the most recent version of your web browser. Um, sometimes you just need to try to refresh the page, and that will be enough. But again, typically this this loads more or less straight away. I'm going to try to be a little bit patient. Hmm. I'll try just creating a new connection. Oh, there we go. So just have to be a little bit patient. Okay, so now that we have um, our Bokeh web server running in the background, then we can have this list of dashboards. Now, this is the same list of dashboards that we looked at last time within JupyterLab server. Okay, so now if we, for example, if we were to open um, GPU resources in one tab and machine resources in another tab, 
So here's our machine resources. So this is the same four dashboards that we saw last time. And here's our GPU resources, same four dashboards that we saw last time. The difference now is that this job is running. Um, we launched this job via Slurm as a batch job on IBEX. And so here we are not involved with JupyterLab server at all, but we are still able to access these dashboards by simply setting up a, um, the Envy dashboard server application and starting it before we launch our training job. So just to remind you where we did that, so in our train.sbatch script, we go ahead and launch our uh, Envy dashboard server here. And then once our training is done, we'll send a kill signal to kill the NV dashboard process ID. And I guess there's a couple of, of uh, bash tips and tricks in this script that I also, I also point out just in case you're unaware. Um, the first is to launch a, um, a process in the background. We provide this special character here, this and symbol. So this just means that instead of blocking and waiting for the result of whatever the script does to return, before continuing execution of this script, we launch it in, in the background and then continue executing the lines, uh, the command lines in this script. So then what will happen is that once the server process starts in the background, it will return a PID, which we will capture using this dollar sign exclamation point special variable in bash and store it to this value in v dashboard PID. Then we launch the training script. Now this, this training script will block so it will basically continue to run this training process until the training process finishes. So that's until the Python script train.py finishes execution, at which point then and only then will it kill the NV dashboard server. So if we go back to our uh, resource timeline, so we can see that our, our, our GPU is still churning away. We have the, the same kind of performance that we would expect because we checked when we prototyped this, uh, this script um, and tested the job within our JupyterLab server with, um, with just a little bit of resources on the, on the uh, debug partition, sorry. Um, so we were seeing the same metrics. So now we've launched a batch job. And again, we're able to track the metrics and we can see that the performance is still high. It's very important that you, if you're going to ask for uh, GPU resources, particularly if you're gonna ask for substantial GPU resources, so more than one GPU, for example, for any significant period of time, that you, are, you be able to monitor your GPU and CPU utilization so that you can be confident that your job actually is using the GPU or actually is getting good performance out of your GPU. So that's the, the main reason why I have made the previous video in this video is to help make it easier for new users to understand how they can monitor their uh, GPU and CPU resource utilization themselves for their jobs so that they can catch issues before they launch a you know, multi-day, multi-GPU training job and only to find out that they have to ask for extensions or that the job is not performing the way that they were thinking it would. So using these metrics dashboards will help you catch a lot of problems before they, whilst they're kind of small problems and you're debugging things before they become potentially big problems or before you end up losing work because you, know, you launched a training job that you thought was using GPUs and turned out not to be using any GPUs at all. Okay. So rather than let this job, um, Continue. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cancel it. So I'll go back here to my uh, my terminal, and I'll just uh, take a look at the jobs that are running, and I will go ahead and copy this and uh, s cancel the job. OK, 
So now, in case you're wondering, if we go back here and look at these resource dashboards, so now they're kind of like frozen. So this is what it looks like when your job either is canceled or it ends, and you were to go and look at what was uh, what was here. Uh, you just there's no more data being streamed from the compute node through the SSH tunnel uh, to our local host at this port. So you just get a snapshot of what it was when the process died. So we can just close these out similarly with this one. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shut down my uh, JupyterLab server. So I'll go ahead and shut down my JupyterLab server, close this tab, and go back to my, my terminal window here. So now if I run SQ as the user, I'll see that I don't have any jobs running. So I just shut down my Jupyter server, so I have no more jobs running at all. Um, but now I'm going to launch the same batch job again, and as if I never wanted to use JupyterLab at all, and I just wanted to use from the terminal to launch the batch job and get access to the Bokeh server with the monitoring uh, dashboards. So if we run LS, then we can see here we're in our project uh, root directory as expected. So we want to launch our job. So we're going to do run the launcher script again. OK, and so now this is going to launch our job. Okay. So our job is running. So now if we look at the results of our example training job 1477, Nine four three one slurm dot error. We'll see now we need to make a tunnel again. So we make our tunnel, copy paste the command, wait for it to log in, possibly type your password if you're not using SSH keys. We minimize that. And then we'll go back and copy this again. OK, here we go. And so now we have our Bokeh, uh, uh, Bokeh server landing page again. And we can look at the GPU resources and the machine resources for our job. And so this is the process that you would go through if you were launching a job. You weren't using JupyterLab server at all. Um, you just wanted to launch, um, to, to launch a job from the command line um, entirely. And so again, it's the same process and you can get access to the same uh, monitoring dashboards. Um, I often like to launch batch jobs from within uh, JupyterLab uh, simply because I do, enter, I do a lot of interactive work, prototyping, debugging. Once I'm happy with something, then I will go ahead and just immediately launch the job uh, on the batch partition um, of IBEX, go back and work on something else within JupyterLab, maybe launch some other jobs. Um, but if you, you've got everything prototyped and everything is ready to go, then it might be quicker just to log in, get into your project directory, run your equivalent of the uh, launch train.shell script and boom, your job is up and running. Then you can get into your, your slurm log files and particularly the slurm.error file and create your SSH tunnel, check this out and check out the, the monitoring server. Now, um, I don't leave these monitoring servers up and running like at all times. Um, typically, I will periodically check in with them and see how they're going, see how they're doing. So, you know, I will start up a job. I'll go and check the monitoring dashboards, make sure the job got up and running, seems to be showing the same kinds of performance that I was expecting. Then I will, you know, I'll close these guys out and, um, you know, maybe come back a few hours later, go through the same process again. Um, if your uh, SSH connection has broken, then you'll have to go back in. Um, and so in particular, I think uh, this was the SSH connection that I made uh, just a minute ago. Um, if this connection breaks, um, for whatever reason, you know, you're on a spotty Wi-Fi connection or, or whatnot, and then this, this connection breaks, that means you've lost your tunnel and you would need to go back 
um, into the logs, copy this SSH command again, recreate your uh, SSH tunnel, and then you could point your browser uh, to, um, to this URL. But if your SSH connection is still open, then all you have to do is just paste the uh, URL in your browser again, and the dashboard uh, application is still running. OK, uh, one last thing. So you might be worried about, oh, this is, is this going to use a whole lot of overhead, uh, this monitoring server. Uh, and the answer is no. So I have used this monitoring server to monitor um, you know, eight V100s training ImageNet um, from start to finish and you know, about eight hours of running. And I've never seen any, um, any noticeable performance uh, impact from using uh, this monitoring server. So it's pretty lightweight. Definitely worth using. OK, so that's all I have for this video. Um, so we've covered quite a lot so far. There's one more topic that I think is very important that I want to cover in the next video. And that's really, um, that's really that's important before you start really asking for large scale resources for doing particularly deep learning training uh, on IBEX. And that's TensorBoard. So, I've showed you how to launch training jobs. I've showed you how to uh, monitor your GPU and CPU utilization using these uh, NV dashboard tools. And that's great. But you also need to know that your training is actually making progress. So you need to know that the metrics that you care about, like maybe top one accuracy or overall accuracy or F1 score if you're doing classification, uh, if you're doing some kind of regression problem, then you might be using like a, an R squared or root mean squared error or something like this as a, as a metric. Whatever metrics you care about, you need to be able to monitor the progress of those metrics to make sure that it's actually doing, um, that your training is making progress. Because if your training is not making progress, then you need to kill that job and start the whole debugging process over again to figure out exactly what's wrong with either your model um, and you don't want to just let a job run for days on end without having any idea whether you're a using your GPU efficiently, which is what we talked about here, or b making any progress towards convergence. So in the next video, I will show you, uh, or at least in a follow-on video, I will show you how to uh, integrate TensorBoard into this workflow so that you can monitor the uh, the progress of your training job, the convergence progress of your training job. Okay, so thanks. Uh, and as always, please feedback is much appreciated. You can either leave comments, com uh, contact us on Slack or via email. Uh, let us know if there's anything in particular that we've not covered that you would like to see covered. Uh, it's really helpful to get feedback and kind of instructions as to what, um, what training videos you'd like to see next. Okay, bye for now.